Mike with another uh, J Sketcher video here. Today I'm going to take you through some of the constraints that you can do in the uh, the 2D Sketcher. So uh, I'm going to start off by uh, creating a sketch. So right now I have this plane selected and I'm going to simply hit Edit Sketch. It's going to bring up the 2D Sketcher. Now in the 2D Sketcher on the, uh, the right hand side you have a series of constraints that you can create. Now these are relationships between the pieces of geometry in the sketch and I'm going to simply start off by drawing some lines. So I'm going to draw a line, I'm going to draw a second line, I'm going to draw a third line, and I'm going to draw a fourth line. Now notice I'm kind of being a little bit sloppy when I was drawing these lines. None of them are straight. Oh, I'm going to hit escape just so that I can stop drawing. I'm going to delete this one. I select it. I'm just going to hit delete. But notice how I'm a little bit sloppy. I just created these lines. They're kind of just floating around. Um, there's no relationships between them yet. So I'm going to start by establishing some consent, um, some uh, coincident relationships. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the first point. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to pick the second point. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these points coincident. The points are going to be the same point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the coincident constraint. Now notice how these two points are linked and now I have a coincident constraint. If I hover over it over here on the on the left hand side where it shows me a list of all my constraints, you can see how it highlights. I can click and drag it and notice how both lines update at once, which is very nice. So I'm just going to go and uh, I'm going to do the same thing to these other um, these other points here. So I'm going to pick that point, I'm going to hold down my shift key, I'm going to pick the second point, and I'm going to select coincident. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, this right here is a uh, is a shape that maybe it's uh, maybe I want to make this into a rectangle. So if I wanted to make this into a rectangle, I know that I need to establish 90 degree uh, 90 degree constraints between things. So right here, I'm going to make it so that they I'm going to make some right corners. So I'm going to pick two lines. So I'm, I selected the first line just by clicking on it. I'm going to select the second line by holding down the shift key and clicking it. And I'm going to select the, uh, the perpendicular constraint. So right there you can see how I, uh, I made this a 90 degree angle. Now if I were to click and drag on that point I can adjust it. Notice how the geometry is still say, staying at a 90 degree angle. Now I'm going to go and uh, make it so that I have parallel lines. Now parallel lines, this is something that's very useful. Um, it's a very common constraint to use. So I'm going to click this line and I'm going to hold down my shift key again and I'm going to select the second line. And what I can do is I can pick the parallel constraint. The parallel constraint will make it so that those two lines are parallel now. So at this point, I have a 90 degree constraint. I have a whole bunch of coincident constraints. You can see as I hover over each one how they highlight in red. If I, hi if I hover over that perpendicular, it, uh, it shows me the perpendicular constraint. And it shows me the two lines that are parallel. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set these two lines to be parallel. There we are. So now those two lines are parallel. And you'll notice how now I have a proper rectangle. Okay. Um, it's going to stay 90 degrees. Um, all the corners are going to stay at 90 degrees because of these two parallel constraints. And a single perpendicular constraint. Now, if I wanted this rectangle to, uh, to stay uh, horizontal, it's like if I wanted this line to always stay horizontal, 
I can simply pick that line and I can tell it that I want to create a horizontal constraint. Now notice um, it automatically made that horizontal. And now I can move it around all I want, but it's always going to stay horizontal. Same thing here. I can click and drag and that's always going to stay horizontal. Now we have some other constraints that we can establish here. Um, we can establish length um, as being equal or radius as being equal. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. I'm going to make it fairly obvious. You can see that this line and this line are not equal in length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick those two lines. So I'm going to select the first one, hold down my shift key and select the second one. And I'm going to tell them that those are equal. So now I have a proper square. The sides will always stay the exact same length. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a square now. And no matter what I do, the, uh, the top is always going to be uh, equal to the, the, the height, the length and the, the, the length and the height will always be the same. Okay, so we have some other constraints that are pretty useful. So we can establish relationships between a, uh, a point and a line. Um, we can establish lengths or a distance between two points. So right here, I'm going to just select this line. Now, the distance between two points can be used uh, in general, if, if I were to just simply create a point and drop it out here, I can pick that point and hold down the shift key and pick this other point and give it a, a distance. Now right now it's telling me that that's 250. Um, I can enter in a value, let's just say 50 and hit enter and notice how the sketch updates. This will always stay uh, 50 units from that point no matter where I drag it okay see it's staying 50 units from that point I can also establish a length of a line so right here if I select that I can pick the distance between two points now right there and inferred the two points that I was going to use the the ends of that line and what I can do is I can type in something like 500 and hit OK and notice how my square changed in size. And notice how that point is still 50 units from there. Now if I wanted to go and edit this again, what I can do is I can come over here to the constraint list and I can pick it. And I can change that value. So I can change this to something like 250. So right there we have, uh, we have some of the basic constraints. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to establish another constraint real quick. So right here I'm going to create a point. Now I want this point to be approximate, I want it to be halfway, um, I want it to be at the midpoint of this line. I want it to be uh, there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick that point, okay, and I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to pick that line. And what I can do is I can tell that to be at the midpoint of that line. So point in the middle, this icon right here, will allow me to do that. So right here, this point will always be at the midpoint of that line, um, no matter where I move it. Okay. Something else that I could do is I could pick this line, and I could pick this point, and I can establish a distance. A distance from that line to that point. So right here it's asking me for a value. I can set this to something like 20 and hit enter and notice how it updates and that point is now guaranteed to be 20 units from that line. Now at any point I can come over here and let's just say I don't like this uh, particular constraint. Okay. I could simply hit the X on it over here and delete it. And now I could move that again freely. The last constraint I'm going to show you is going to be the, uh, um, the radius constraint. So if I draw a circle and I pick it, 
I can establish a radius for it. Let's just say 